Hey Game Zone fans, this is Matt. I'm here in the Boca Raton Museum of Art with Chris Melisinos, the curator for the Art of Video Games exhibit, which came all the way from Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian uh, Museum of Art, correct? Right, the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Okay, yeah. I don't know my museums, but uh, okay. all I know is this museum down here is awesome because of this exhibit. Um, I am blown away by the amount of stuff you have here. Uh, what can you tell us about what this exhibit has? What can people look forward to when they come here? Sure, so the... the uh, the exhibit really covers 40 years of game progression in American culture. So how Americans really thought about video games. So when you said video games in the 1970s, what did it mean? Well, it meant Atari, right? Regardless if you were playing an Intellivision or a ColecoVision, it kind of meant Atari. And so what we tried to do was show the progression of games in our culture over time then, and actually showcases the mechanics of those games, how they persist mm -hmm. from generation to generation to form art. Mm -hmm. And I noticed uh, you literally have every console uh, from starting with Atari here, going on to the PS3, Xbox 360 and everything. Right. And you can actually see the progression of, of the games. You can see uh, multiple games on each system, how they looked, how they played. Uh, what inspired you to, to bring this all together and uh, uh, really show people this history? So, you know, I started programming in the 1970s, right? I, I started programming at the age of nine. I had my first game written by the time I was 12. So video games have been part of my entire life, um, including my professional career. And at one point I said, you know, we have to have a bigger discussion about video games as an art form because it truly is art. And um, it was a matter of finding the right venue in which to do this. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to meet the folks over at the Smithsonian American Art Museum, and they was sort of thinking along the same lines. And so it was just kind of this very chance meeting that turned into this wonderful opportunity to help illuminate um, video games as a form of expression, as an important form of expression for so many of us that grew up doing these things, right? And it isn't until 40 years on that we're able to actually look back and realize that what we were creating was art. Within it, the, these games near, you'll see social reflection, you see personal storytelling, you see poetry, you see, uh, you know, moral uh, stories and, and things that question our, our morality. Um, all of that is embodied within video games, and that's what's represented in here, kind of that breadth of expression that's been going on for 40 years now. It's, it's, it's really great that you point out that video games are art, because I have this uh, argument with many people that uh, they don't consider it art, you know? There's a whole lot of elements, like artistic elements, that, uh, that go into making a video game, and do you feel that this exhibit uh, brings that out, or brings those art elements out? Well, it's one of the things we tried to do, right? I mean, art is a really subjective term. It's very difficult to kind of quantify what is art and what isn't. I mean, I have my own definition of it, which has served me well, which is, I believe, you know, if you can observe the work of another creative work and understand its intent while finding a personal connection, then art has been achieved. So what we tried to do within the body of the exhibition was to explain that it's not just about the art within games, but the art of game, video games themselves. Because within video games, we see painting and sculpture and narrative and orchestration and full storytelling and morality tales. All of these things that by themselves we identify culturally as art, mm -hmm. but together create something that basically eclipses any one particular form of art. Mm -hmm. and that's what makes video games so powerful and that's what makes this <laughs> exhibition so much fun. It is, it is a lot of fun. You have uh, all the past consoles, you have the current consoles, mm -hmm. and then you have the future. I mean, moving forward, we have, I mean, presumably uh, mobile games as well as uh, potentially a new Xbox and everything. Mm -hmm. Do you just see that, that form of art growing in the future? I mean, what do, you, what do you see in terms of what gamers and what uh, fans of art can expect in the future? So I, I actually think we're really at the, this, the beginning stage of this whole new renaissance within game development. I mean, if you take a look back at the earliest forms of video games, like in the Atari BCS and the Intellivision, the designers, the storytellers, were limited by the platforms of their day, which is why so many of those games came with comic books and came with you know, these really lush manuals and everything was beautifully illustrated. It was to further describe a world, a story that they wanted to tell, but their platform was too anemic in which to tell it. Today, we don't have those issues, right? We're able to push the bounds of realism. We're able to go ahead and fully articulate a story through the game itself. So with technology no longer being the barrier to creativity, what we're going to start seeing is more artists limiting themselves mm -hmm. to create new forms of games, new forms of art. So you look at games like Limbo, you look at games like Fez, right? They're not pushing for realism, they're pushing for a different way of describing their world. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer the limitation of technology. Artists will now limit themselves to create new forms of art. Yeah. And that 
is incredibly exciting. It's funny, you have like these, these giant blockbusters, you have like Call of Duty and you have like Halo, and they're great games, they're, they're big blockbuster games, but then you also have like things like Journey or yeah. like uh, the recently released Unfinished Swan, and those are more simplistic, but I think you can make the argument that they're equally as artistic, if not more artistic, you know? Oh yeah, no, in fact, a great game you brought up was Journey. Um, I had the opportunity to write the foreword for the book, uh, The Art of Journey, that just came out by Matt Nava, who is the uh, principal artist on the game. And one of the things that, uh, in going back and replaying the game uh, to write this, I said, you know, let me really pay attention to what is going on here from a uh, communication standpoint. So the fact that your character has one single tone that they can emit creates this entire palette of conversation that occurs by people bleeding in rapid succession to alert to danger that's occurring or these long drawn out notes that uh, denote kind of this um, this somber sort of uh, dialogue. And then you realize it wasn't just one person, it was dozens of people that were coming in and out of your gameplay, right? But what it provided was this, uh, this example that if we allow ourselves to give ourselves up to the game, we will find a way to have those conversations, to create important, meaningful interaction with each other. Mm -hmm. And we're just getting started with it. It's a very, very exciting time to be in a world where video games are so prevalent and yeah. so widely adopted. We're very uh, fortunate with uh, the technology we have, especially, you know, they have the upcoming Wii U console, which is going to completely change the way people interact already with games. Already have line pre order so have pre -order. absolutely. They're, they're selling out. They're selling out. Out of the consoles here, which one, which one would you say is, is your go-to console? favorite? Yeah. Um, so it's a toss-up between the two of them, okay. the Saturn or the Dreamcast. Really? Yeah. Um, I think the Dreamcast, for its era, it was just a tremendous platform. I mean, we saw so many incredibly creative games that came out of it that actually a lot of them never saw sequels or never saw themselves outside of the Dreamcast platform. Um, it's one of my favorite consoles. And the Saturn I love because not necessarily of everything that it did, but what it tried to do. Right? It was it sat within an era where designers who had only ever worked within 2D were now being asked to work in 3D. So imagine going to a person who's only ever painted oil on canvas and saying, great, with your next work, here's a hammer and chisel, go make something out of marble. Right? The, the skill sets don't necessarily translate. So what you can almost see in so many of the games, it's kind of that pain of understanding a new form of art, a new form of expression. And the Saturn kind of epitomizes that. And it has a special place in my heart, I guess. I think it's interesting that games, you don't necessarily just play them. You're kind of like affecting the story. Well, that's actually one of the premises that we set up in this exhibition, which is what we call the three voice premise of games, right? Within video games, you have these three distinct voices. You have the voice of the creator, right? The designer of the game. They have something they want to say. They have a story they want to tell, right? When you look at a, a game series like the Metal Gear series, it is very much a Kojima story that is being told there. The second voice is that of the game itself. It's the mechanics of the game. In a game like Journey, you have this one solitary note that can be used, but that mechanic allows you to create this wide variety of communication. But the third voice is that of the player. And so what the player gets to do is make all of these choices within the game that personalize the art for them. But it doesn't take away any of the authority of authorship from the designer. And it's the only form of media that we have, the only form of expressive media we have that allows the player to engage, create a meaningful work out of the game, out of the, the, the work, mm -hmm. but still remain all of the authority of the author. Are, are you going to be here uh, for a while in Boca? For I'll be the, here this? just for this weekend. Okay. And we're going to do a series of talks. I'm going to be in the gallery you know, meeting with anyone that has any questions about the exhibition. And we're going to have a lot of fun this weekend. Yeah, so. well, I definitely recommend coming this weekend then because you are very knowledgeable on this subject. And anybody interested in video games, uh, video game design, correct? You, you have experience in that field as well? Yeah. So. Professionally, I worked in everything from video game technology development. So really, most of the work that I had done through my professional career was to build technologies that other people would use to make these video games. So I spent a tremendous amount of time uh, working in that professional capacity to build technology platforms. But on the personal side, sure, I've been writing games since I was a kid. Okay. So I get to have those kind of experiences that are personal to me and my select circle of friends that get to play those games. Uh -huh. But I've uh, spent, again, my entire life pretty much within video games. Awesome, so people can come here and pick your brain this weekend Absolutely. and figure out uh, how, to, how to go about doing something similar to this. A absolutely. Awesome, absolutely. well Chris, it's been awesome. I can't wait to uh, explore this some more. And uh, definitely stop by this weekend or in the coming weeks. Uh, check out the Art of Video Game exhibit in the Boca Raton Museum. Thank you.